devices, and so on, along with their various subsidiary functions, are not properly carried out, even by the most expert embodied souls. But we do have to perform sacrifice for Vishnu, or Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yagyartat karmanonyatra loko yam karma bandhanaha tadartam karma konteya mukta sangha samachara Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work causes bondage in this material world. Therefore, O son of Kunti, perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction, and in that way you will always remain free from bondage. Bhagavad Gita 3.9 The sacrifice for this age of Kali Yuga is the chanting process of Sankirtan. Srila Jiva Goswami has also cited the Chaturmasya Mahatmya of the Skanda Purana concerning the necessity of chanting the holy names of the Lord in this age. Tata chaivo tamam loke tapa shri hari kirtanam kalau yuge visheshena vishnu priyatyai samacharet In this way, the most perfect penance to be executed in this world is the chanting of the name of Lord Sri Hari. Especially in the age of Kali, one can satisfy the Supreme Lord Vishnu by performing Sankirtan, chanting. So the problem is, Nobody is following these Vedic formulas or directions for self-realization. They're all doing their own thing, taking their own interpretation and doing whatever they like. But it is not possible to perform yogic meditation or Vedic sacrifices to the demigods in this age. They will not be effective because they are prohibited by Vedic injunction, as quoted above. Therefore, the Vedic injunction for the age of Kali is Krishna Varnam Tvisa Krishnam Sango Pagastra Parshadam Yagyai Sankirtanair Prayair Yajantihi Sumedasaha. In the age of Kali, intelligent persons perform congregational chanting to worship the incarnation of Godhead who constantly sings the names of Krishna. Although his complexion is not blackish, he is Krishna himself. He is accompanied by his associates, servants, weapons, and confidential companions. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.5.32 So what does this mean? Krishna Varnam Trisa Krishnam He is Krishna, but not blackish. This means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is Krishna himself, but his complexion is a Krishna, not blackish. Krishna Varnam Trisa Tvisa means complexion. A Krishna means yellowish or golden. Sango Pangastra Parshadam. And he's accompanied by his associates, Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Prabhu, Srivas, and all his other devotees. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Yuga avatar, the worshipable deity in this age of Kali. And what is his process of worship? Yajyai Sankirtana Prayar Yajanti Hi Sumedasaha. This Sankirtan Jagya, this chanting of the holy names, as we are performing as and advising others in this series on the esoteric teaching, is the perfect performance of Yajna in this age, and it will be taken up by those who are sufficiently intelligent. Therefore, this chanting process is the only prescribed Vedic Jagna in this age. Sometimes in India, or in so-called yoga societies, they perform so-called yajnas for collecting some money. But it cannot be successful because the Vedic scriptures do not recommend this type of yajna in Kali Yuga. Ashvamedham gavamedham sannyasam palapaikritam devarena sutotpatim kalau pancha vivarjayet in this age of Kali, five religious processes are forbidden. The offering of a horse in sacrifice, the offering of a cow in sacrifice, the accepting of the order of sannyas, the offering of oblations of flesh to the forefathers, and a man begetting children and his brother's wife. Brahma Vaivarta Purana, Krishna Janmakanda, 185-180. So there is no jagya in this age. 
The only jagna is to chant the mantra of the holy name and dance in ecstasy. This is the only bona fide Vedic jagna or sacrifice in Kali Yuga. In this Kali Yuga, people are so much disturbed. Therefore, Krishna has come in the form of his name, Vasudev, or Hare Krishna. And because Krishna is absolute, there is no difference between his name and himself. Abhinatvam nama naminaho. The holy name of the Lord and the Lord himself are always identical. Nama chintamani Krishna chaitanya rasa vigraha purna shudho nitya mukta. His holy name is full. As Krishna is full and complete, similarly Krishna's name is also full and complete. Shuddha, it is not material. Purna shuddha nitya, full, complete, and eternal. As Krishna is eternal, his name is also eternal. Purna shuddha nitya mukta. There is no material conception in chanting the holy name of the Lord, and it gives eternal liberation. So in this age of Kali Yuga, we cannot be happy materially. Rajyam shuranam api chari patyam. As Arjuna says, even if we get the kingdom of the demigods, asapatya, without any rival, still we cannot be happy so long as we have got the material conception of life, the material ontology, the material consciousness. It's not possible. This is explained in this verse. But chanting of the holy name of the Lord, as exemplified by the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, is the cure for all material miseries. So someone may say, all right, well, I can accept that Krishna's name has a similar quality to Krishna himself. How is it that chanting this name gives uh, freedom from the material miseries? Well, the material miseries are going to be there whether we chant or not. Well, that's a fact. The material miseries are always there, uh, especially when we're in material consciousness. But when we chant the name of Krishna, first of all, we are making a commitment to the transcendental ontology. We're changing our consciousness. How do we change our consciousness? Well, the mind is full of impressions called samskaras. When our impressions are only of the material given to us by the material senses, then our uh, impressions capture us in the material ontology. We're stuck in the material consciousness. And in that ontological uh, world, there's no way out. Huh? We're stuck in the material world life after life. This gives rise to an intense feeling of alienation because we're not material beings. We're spiritual beings. And our real happiness is also spiritual. So when we chant the name of Krishna, we're putting ourselves on the spiritual platform, the spiritual ontology, and we're calling out to Krishna. And when we do this, we fill our mind with thousands of impressions of Krishna, Krishna's name, Krishna's form, Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's qualities, and so on and so forth. And by this cultivation of Krishna consciousness, we transform our ontology from the material ontology to the spiritual ontology. And therefore, we transform our consciousness as well. By purifying our consciousness, we become aware of the spiritual world, and we also become aware of our eternal relationship with Krishna. And therefore, we are able to get out of the consciousness of this material body and revive the consciousness of our perfect spiritual body. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of My Perfect Body. This is David Hughes, your host, reminding you to visit us on the web at esotericteaching.org, where you can purchase the complete Esoteric Teaching Introductory Seminar DVD and many CDs of transcendental music and mantras. <laughs>